From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Unmanned aerial vehicles, also called UAVs or drones, have fundamentally changed the nature of war. Yet many people know surprisingly little about these craft. Drones are not new. The use of balloons in warfare has been around for centuries, and the first remotely controlled aircraft was built in 1916. As technology evolved, drones became more sophisticated and more valuable to the world's militaries. While armies have long prized the potential of drones, these aircraft weren't able to match the skills of a human pilot until relatively recently. It makes sense. Why risk a pilot's life if it's not necessary? Some governments have made enormous investments in drone technology, most notably the United States. Since 2001, the U.S. military has spent $26 billion on drones. Most of these craft are small surveillance vehicles, like the RQ-11 Raven. Drone warfare is vastly unpopular abroad, especially with the United States policy of targeted killings. Despite the controversy, drones have spread across the globe. But where exactly? And how does a government decide who to target? Here's where it gets crazy. We don't know, at least not officially. Although the civilian media is awash with reports of drone activity in the Middle East and Africa, numerous groups in the United States and abroad have called for more transparency in these operations. According to these critics, the U.S. may be violating international human rights standards through its policy of targeted killings. The critics of these policies aren't just conspiracy theorists. The United Nations has condemned the practice, as has the ACLU and former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. Earlier in 2012, the ACLU held a conference in Geneva, Switzerland, claiming that the U.S. government's drone warfare policies are based on secret legal criteria, entirely secret evidence, and a secret process for target selection. UN official Christoph Heinz suggested that the use of drones may constitute war crimes. This call for transparency poses a dilemma. Yet defenders of the policy say the secrecy is a matter of national security. In June of 2012, the Obama administration again refused to declassify documents related to the targeted killing campaigns. In response to the request by the ACLU and the New York Times, the administration argued in part that whether or not the CIA has the authority to or is in fact directly involved in targeted lethal operations remains classified. For critics of the drone operations, the logic of this refusal doesn't add up. After all, politicians in the United States have mentioned the success of drone strikes in public, and details about the programs have already leaked to the media. According to the ACLU, the public is entitled to know more about the legal authority the administration is claiming and the way that the administration is using it. The argument here boils down to a lack of oversight, and the legality or illegality of the drone strikes currently hinges on this debate. This is not an argument that will dissipate over time. Not all of those killed were terrorists or militants, but there's no clear estimate on the number of civilians killed. As the world's militaries focus increasingly on new and more sophisticated drones, it's safe to say that unmanned attacks will continue to occur. While critics see the practice as a violation of human rights and defenders see it as a crucial step in safeguarding America's interest, both sides can agree on one thing. When it comes to the drone attacks, there's something they don't want you to know. <laughs>